Hi, welcome to the Insights from Dr. Intimacy YouTube webcast. I am your host, Prophetess Lamine Hanaya, aka Dr. Intimacy, and I will be giving you an enlightening look into the naked truth about sex, relationships, and intimacy from a spirit, soul, and body perspective. I am very, very excited. I'm actually continuing with my series on incubus and succubus sex demons and, and we are actually getting down to the end of this series talking about my favorite part of this which is the, the deliverance so many people teach on things without actually giving you the empowering tools to help you uh, get delivered and so I've been very excited this is the third session now dealing with deliverance and I, I believe with this is the 11th video in the series if you haven't seen the rest of the videos please go back and watch the rest of the videos they really build each video builds on the uh, one that came before it it is really line upon line precept upon precept in terms of getting some in-depth understanding of this topic which is so prevalent in the body of Christ and yet very few people are talking about it very few people so I'm excited I feel blessed and honored that I, I've been handpicked chosen anointed and appointed by Yahweh the Creator himself to actually bring this information to you I know it's helping a lot of people I've gotten a lot of testimonials in and I'm, I'm excited about that so let's get back into it Again, just showing you the book, The Spirits of Sexual Perversion Reference Book, which you can pick up at my website, drintimacy.com. You'll see the book there. It is currently out of stock, but if you go in and buy a gift certificate, the book will be restocked in just a couple of weeks now. And if you go ahead and purchase a gift certificate on the website, you will be notified before the book is released to the public so that you'll get one of the first copies before it sells out. So please do that. And your purchases help the book to get restocked more quickly and, and helps keep it stocked so that it doesn't continue to sell out because it does uh, sell out rather quickly. But let's get back into these deliverance steps I was on step number five we talked about so far uh, uh, and again just that disclaimer that I'm putting out there any reference to kill murder abort is talking strictly spiritually I am not suggesting um, that you actually harm physically yourself uh, a child or anybody involved in your life that may be operating under some spirit of perversion any reference to kill murder, abort, these are all words, spiritual terms that I'm using, talking about verbally denouncing these spirits and pleading the blood of Yeshua for your victory, okay? But we talked about step number one, you must renounce not only the spirit, but also their work. Step number two, uh, just understanding that it may take some time to get complete deliverance, so you have to continue to denounce uh, and take that, take those communions to break those spirits, abort the seed. Step number three, don't ever let an attack carry on without challenging it. So while the attack is occurring, if you want to break the cycle, because it may continue to happen when you first start going through the deliverance process, you have to continue to challenge those attacks every time they're starting. Uh, and you can watch the prior video to get more information about any of these steps. I'm not going to go over them again because I discussed them thoroughly. Step number four for attacks that are occurring while you sleep. Apply the blood of Yeshua to your mind and renounce these spirits before you lay down. You want to command your subconscious mind to wake you up if you begin to have an attack during your sleep so that you can fight back. That's very important. And so now we're going on to step number five let's read step number five it is very very important that you consecrate yourself and the word consecrate means to separate yourself or to set yourself apart so you really want to separate yourself from everything every evil influence you want to set yourself apart unto the most high and holy God for his purposes and his righteousness. 
Every spirit must be cast out of your life and every door closed as much as you are capable of doing. Okay, I know that you may be still developing spiritually. You may not be as mature as some of your mentors or some of the people that you look up to, but it, it is important and you are obligated to do what you can do. You may not be able to do everything right now, but you're obligated to do what you can do. Whatever you've been equipped with, with, with whatever you have learned so far, you must apply it. You must apply it. Uh, so as much as you are capable of, close every door, cast every spirit out of your life. That means that you do not, you do not willfully involve yourself in anything at all that is sinful or ungodly. So you're not going to willfully involve yourself in anything at all, not on purpose, that is sinful or ungodly. When you do fall or make a mistake, you must repent and get up quickly. Okay, the righteous man falls seven times, but he gets up. Don't wallow in it. Not that you will be perfect. No one is. But every sinful and carnal area of your life must be challenged to the max. Okay? Everything's got to be challenged. This is especially true when you are in the midst of a deliverance process. Okay? So don't let any sin in your life go unchallenged. You want to challenge every carnal uh, uh, stronghold in your life. If you watch a lot of TV, it needs to stop. As a matter of fact, while you're going through deliverance, I know this sounds really bad, but you need to not watch TV at all. You need to not listen to secular music, period. You need to not read any magazine or book other than the Bible or something that is, is deliberately building you spiritually, period. Because there are so many influences in, uh, in those materials and that media that can draw you back and hinder your deliverance process. So you want to commit to fasting and praying. The scripture says that these kind come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Uh, you're going to have to implement the power of prayer and fasting if you really, really want to be free. You know, I had somebody write me on, uh, on, my, on my blog maybe about a month or so ago, and she was having some serious um, attacks from Incubus. And I told her she needed to check out the the article and to apply the deliverance steps. And uh, she wrote me back maybe in a couple of days, and she said, I did it, now what? <laughs> well, this is not something that you can actually uh, accomplish in a couple of days. Deliverance is a process, not an event. Uh, deliverance is a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's, it's a series of things that you're going to do over a period of time that is gradually going to lead to your freedom. Uh, I read another comment from the blog where a gentleman talked about he went through a deliverance session. Deliverance doesn't happen in a session. A, a portion or an element of deliverance may happen in a session. An element of your deliverance can happen over a couple of days. You're, you're experiencing deliverance right now as you're listening to me, as you're watching me. Deliverance is happening right now. You are, you are ensuing the process of deliverance right now, watching this video, watching this series. But it is a part of a process. This is one thing that you're doing that is a part of a process that is going to lead to your complete deliverance. So uh, this particular lady had been having these issues for a number of years and in a couple of days felt that she was completely delivered. Well, I, I, I find that very hard to believe. I doubt it because one of the things that you want to do is pray and fast. You want to pray and fast. When I really needed to be delivered from, from something, uh, a serious stronghold that I had in my life for a number of years and just kept falling back into it, no matter what I did, I had to go on a fast. You know, the Holy Spirit kept talking to me about going on a fast. And, you know, you can look at me and see that I'm not that big. I don't have a whole lot of meat to spare. <laughs> I may seem really deep and prophetic, and I am, but I don't I don't really like fasting. I don't like starving myself. 
Um, I have a high metabolism. I burn through food quickly. I get hungry easily. I didn't want to fast. But for three years, I kept asking him for help in this particular area of stronghold that I had. And his answer kept coming back to me the same. These kind come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. And I finally went on a 21-day fast, 21 days. I just kept praying. I said, Father, I need you to help me. I don't like fasting. I don't know how to fast. When I try to fast, I get hungry by 12 p.m. I feel like I'm going to faint. And, uh, you know, I'm just being really real and transparent and honest with you. This is my story. And I kept praying and leading up to that time. Like, I need you to give me some grace. I need you to send people that I can glean from, that I can hook up with, somebody that I can connect with. One can chase a thousand, but two can chase ten thousand. And And he did that. See, if you really, really want something, if you really desire something, ask and it shall be given. He gave me that grace that I asked for. He gave me the people to help me, people that I hadn't spoke to in years and some that I had never even met showed up to pray with me during that time of fasting to undergird me. And uh, I was just amazed. I was able to complete a 21 day fast, 15 days with no uh, food at all. And it was just amazing. And I'm telling you, that issue that I had had in my life for three years, it broke. I mean, it broke completely. It was shattered. So you might not be able to do 15 days without food right now, but can you get sweets out of your life? Can you get TV out of your life? Can you get games out of your life? Can you get, you know, what can you omit? What can you sacrifice right now? Something that, that is really going to be sacrificial that you can let go because it, it can be a process working your way up to being able to really uh, withdraw and seclude yourself in prayer and fasting. And when I started that 21 day fast, I didn't go straight into not eating. My body wasn't accustomed to that. What I did is I just gradually started to eat less and pray more. That's what I did. I ate less and I prayed more. And it was by, uh, it was by the sixth day that I actually went into not eating any food at all. But it just began with me eating less and praying more. And so as my body was getting used to not having so much food and getting used to accustomed to being able to function on less food, my spirit man was getting stronger because I was praying more daily and reading the scripture more. And so it's really, really important. You have got to commit to praying and fasting. If you're having some serious issues with incubus, uh, with sex demons, with bitterness, with unforgiveness, with witchcraft, it doesn't matter what it is, depression, suicide, whatever your issue is, prayer and fasting will take care of it. But you need to be committed to it. You really, really need to be committed Pray about how you can fast, what you can fast from, you know, take into consideration medications and things like that. But everybody can fast from TV. There's nobody that's going to be physically harmed by, by going on a nice TV fast, a secular music fast, a video game fast, uh, a, a cell phone game fast, a Facebook fast, a MySpace fast. Uh, people even use MySpace anymore. But a social media fast. You know, everybody can fast like that. Everybody can fast from sweets and junk food. Um, and so there's really no excuse. Maybe you can't do 21 days with no food, but you can do something. And again, this is about doing what you can do, because when you do all that you can do, that is when the father shows up with his supernatural to make up for the part that you can't do. And his grace will overtake you and you will be amazed at what you get accomplished. So really, really commit to fasting and praying, praying and omit. Get rid of every influence in your life, every carnal influence, every sinful influence, all the people, places, and things that have brought sin into your life or temptation into your life. You need to consecrate yourself, separate yourself from those things completely. This is Dr. Intimacy. You've been watching the Insights from Dr. Intimacy YouTube webcast. That is my time for this particular segment 
I'm very excited to reconnect with you on the next segment and to continue talking about the next steps in the deliverance process from uh, sex demons and, and really any type of stronghold that you're having, but specifically these sex demons. Remember to share these videos on your social media pages to help bless somebody else with it. And I look forward to sharing with you on the next segment. Thanks.